Welcome to SoCalTech Interviews, where we talk with the investors, entrepreneurs, and others in Southern California's high-tech industry. Our interview today is with Ian Chen, the co-founder and CEO of DiscoTech. I'm Ben Kuo, founder and editor of SoCalTech.com. Tell me what uh, Discotech does. Yeah, so Discotech, we like to call ourselves the open table for nightlife. So we develop a mobile app and website, and our platform, we make it easier for customers to, uh, one, discover events, two, reserve VIP tables, um, three, purchase pre-sale tickets, and lastly, and probably most popular on our platform is sign up for free or discounted guest lists to uh, go to clubs, pool parties, and concert venues. How did you get started? Yeah, so uh, in my previous lifetime, uh, while I was working in private equity in LA, uh, was working a lot, didn't have a lot of free time, and part of my pastime was going out. Um, and while I was doing that, I realized that it was really inefficient for a customer like myself who's trying to spend money to go out. Uh, I had to go find different nightclub promoters, call them, text them. A lot of these guys are not the most professional people in the world. And I realized that there was an opportunity for technology to disrupt the space the same way that you saw like Booking.com, Kayak disrupt travel, travel agents, Open Table disrupting restaurant concierges. So really just applying the same model and idea they did to the inefficient world of nightlife. Interesting. And uh, how, how's the uh, startup funded? Uh, so initially we were really lean and bootstrapped, friends and family. Uh, we did a, another round um, with some small institutional investors, some angels, early customers of Discotech. Uh, but you know, throughout time, um, you know, we've just been really lean. Uh, we were very much focused on not burning a lot of cash. And I think because of that frugalness, we're still around today when a lot of our competitors, including those who've raised you know, many times more, um, more funding than we did, are no longer in existence. What has been the uh, hardest part about your startup? What do you think? There were so many challenges in the beginning. So when we started Discotech, we had the same idea that a lot of other apps did, including one that raised money from Shark, um, like Mark Cuban right, and Damon right. from Shark Tank, called Easy VIP, which was let's disrupt bottle service, you know, VIP tables, because you know promoters are doing that. Again, it's inefficient, and there's some good money in the space. So when we started the app about six years ago, that was the idea, that was the vision for Discotech. Open table for just VIP tables, right. <laughs> essentially. And we started to get a little bit of traction, but we just weren't getting the growth, the organic, you know, the hockey stick growth that we needed to see a sustainable future. We were just not making the, you know, the, the income statement work, so to speak. Right. So we, we, we had to pivot a little bit. And I think that pivot around year two or three was very key for us. And what we did was we added the, the ticketing component, which opened the app up to people who aren't the you know the one percenters, the big spenders. But actually, what was the big the big uh, driver for us was guest list. So we started partnering up with clubs, getting exclusive guest lists on our platform. And again, what a guest list is, it's free or discounted admission as long as you show up to the club early and your name is on a list. And that really took it off for us. Uh, people started talking about us word of mouth. Uh, because now we really democratize nightlife t to anyone who wants to go out. Including, yeah. Why would they say, hey, I want to uh, work with Discotech to, to, to bring more people in the door? Well, there are some clubs I would say in their peak don't need more traffic, but it's a competitive world out there. There are a lot of clubs, a lot of cities, and in every city that we're in, there are venues that are looking to drive more foot traffic through their doors. A uh, couple re reasons why it's beneficial for them. One is by making them show up early, they typically will spend more on drinks at the bar. So that pays off the guest list commission we make very quickly. Ah, okay. Drinks are very expensive at a club, you know, $15, $20 a pop. And the second is the VIP table customers make up a large percentage of their revenue. But what you don't want to have is these big spenders showing up at a club and it's like empty and there's no party because then they're not going to drop the big bucks. So by working together with the guest list, we bring them traffic, we fill the club, we make the party and everyone's kind of happy because of it. Interesting. Now, how's the experience been as a, a startup founder? You were in private equity, and yeah. now you're running a company. It's quite a big difference. How, how's that been? It's compl uh, completely different. Um, a lot, 
you know, a lot of pros and cons. Uh, I'm definitely happier as an entrepreneur, which is why I think I, I made the leap. Certainly was making a lot, paying myself or getting paid a lot more in private equity than I pay myself <laughs> now as an entrepreneur right. many factors. So right. a lot of people gave me the, the feedback, like you're quitting like a job in private equity to do a startup. Like what's wrong with you? <laughs> My mom was like stunned. She was in disbelief. She would not like, she would not, she was not okay with it. Um, but I think the, the vision, the mission, working with people I, you know, my friends, people I care about, and building this company that we believe in uh, has a lot of intrinsic value and satisfaction. And I think now I don't get what's called the Sunday scaries. So before, like Sunday night before going back to work in private equity, or you know, sometimes I'm working all week anyways, right. uh, I would always just get anxiety. Like I was just so sad the weekend was ending. And now I don't have that feeling when I wake up and you know, I'm, I'm happy to tackle the day and work every day. Interesting, so, so it feels, uh, so you think it, personally you're, you're feeling a lot better now that you've uh, gone, become an entrepreneur? Uh, absolutely, and the first two and a half years with Discotech, I actually, um, the founders didn't pay ourselves any salary. We oh, all wow. were living okay. off savings. <laughs> uh, it covered like our living expenses, of course, but um, I, re I learned then, then and there, it's like, wow, money really, I mean, you need to have some, of course, but right. definitely not the more the merrier. Definitely didn't need it to be happy. Uh, finding something that you know we we're passionate about, waking up every morning and working on it, uh, very rewarding. Building, doing a stressful for sure is, is uh, stressful. <laughs> doing a startup is definitely stressful. Uh, and when we weren't sure that we were going to make it, there were hard times. But looking back on it now, you know, I'm very glad we did it. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what was the, uh, when you, you did the pivot, what, what was the deciding point for you saying, hey, we need to just change up what we're doing? I, I think we were just looking back at our numbers over two years and just seeing like, you know, at this growth rate, if we model this out, what does that look like? And the answer wasn't very good. Like we were not getting enough users or revenue to, to justify kind of what we were doing. So we realized we needed to kind of change plans and throw a Hail Mary and it actually stuck. So that's again, good, good. why we're so, around. So, so what's, uh, what's next for you guys then? Uh, you know, we're, right now we're really focused on growth. Um, we're expanding to new cities, adding new venues. We started off with just nightclubs, but we've since expanded our offering to, you know, pool parties, concerts, festivals, and we're going to continue to do that and get more users and see where that takes us. Great. Uh, last, last uh, question is, What's the biggest piece of advice you'd give another entrepreneur who's working on their startup? Yeah, I'd say that focusing on the business model and unit economics is extremely important. Um, one of our biggest challenges, again, going back to that question, is profitability. So um, our, our margins are, are fairly weak. We make somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 15 percent margins. In an ideal, if, if we were in a space where that was 40 to 50 percent, the name of the game would be so different. Um, being able to you know, acquire users, the LTV versus CAC equation completely changes depending on your profitability and your unit economics. So pick an industry with, with high margins or one where uh, the cost of acquiring a customer is very low because if you can, at the end of the day, it's, it's all this LTV versus CAC. And, if you can make that equation work for you, then you'll be very successful. Great, great. Well, uh, thanks a lot.